The reasons for mushy succulent leaves may seem obvious, but there are some lesser known, more unlikely causes. In this video, we'll have a look at 7 reasons succulent leaves get mushy and how to fix them. I'm going to start with some of the more uncommon reasons and work my way up to the obvious. Let's get into it. When leaf-eating succulent pests manage to munch through just the right bits, they can cause the leaf and even the whole plant to go mushy. It can very much look like rotting. Let me show you just a few examples I managed to get on video in my nursery over the years. So this is Equiviria exotica and at first glance it looks like the bottom leaves are rotting a bit. They are dark in color and a bit mushy. But on closer inspection, look what's lurking underneath. Grubs. Not only are they eating the roots but also the leaves. Because they are constantly keeping the wound open, not allowing it to heal, the leaf eventually starts turning dark brown or black and going mushy. And there's rarely only one. Here's another example. I hate to call these guys pests as they will eventually turn into butterflies or moths. This caterpillar has made a temporary home in the leaf, feeding on it from the inside out. Because it's keeping the wound open, preventing the leaf to dry and heal, it starts getting black and mushy. When pests eat a bit and leave the leaf be, the wound tends to dry over, but keeping it open will almost always result in what appears to be rot. Many larger pests have the ability to cause this. Personally, I only control aphids, mealybugs and scale and share my plants with the larger insects. They are dying out almost everywhere in the world and I don't really want to kill them. However, if you want to, there are pesticides available for most. Leaves of overcrowded succulents that grow very close together can get a bit squashed which may sometimes cause them to turn into mush. This can often be observed in gardens or arrangements where succulents have gone a bit crazy and grown over each other. Lots of pups, in particularly prolific succulents, can also make some of the leaves mushy. One of the reasons is that crowded succulents growing closely together keep the immediate surrounds a little bit more humid, especially around the base. When the weather is fairly dry, the mushy leaves will just dry out in time, but when it's wet and humid, they can attract fungal disease that have the ability to rot succulents. Also, some succulents are more prone to rot than others and the increased humidity just from being crowded may be enough for rot causing fungus to decimate the plant. Similar to crowding, when succulent leaves get pushed against the rim of the pot, it can cause the leaf to go mushy. This Mexican giant has heavy leaves and new growth squeezes the most bottom ones down hard. Look at how this leaf is mushy exactly where the rim is. The good thing is, the mushy leaves tend to just dry out and fall off. If you start noticing a lot of mushy leaves in crowded succulents, it may be best to remove the affected leaves and make sure none of the plants are rotting. If possible, keep out of the rain and let the plants dry out before giving them any more water. There's quite a range of fungal disease that can affect succulents and cause their leaves to go mushy. Various rot, powdery mildew or black spot and mold can all cause leaves to become slushy. Leaves, roots and stems can be affected. Rot is one of the most serious fungal diseases. It can kill and turn the whole plant into a heap of sludge. Any black marks and or mushy leaves should be treated with fungicide and affected succulents may need to be kept out of the rain. You can also watch my how to spot and fix overwatered succulents video tagged at the end where I explain treatment options in more detail. Some 
Succulents can handle quite a bit of heat during extreme summer weather, but it's the direct sun and its UV exposure that can pretty much cook them alive. Once temperatures start rising to over 35 degrees Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit, many succulents can get sunburns. Over 40 degrees or 104 Fahrenheit, some can easily cook and have their leaves go mushy, especially if they are in dark colored small pots. Different succulents will also have different levels of tolerance to direct hot sun during heat waves. However, I'd strongly recommend putting potted plants in shade or create shade over them during super hot weather. While some succulents are tolerant of frost and snow, the majority will have the water in their leaves and stems freeze over. Once they start defrosting, the leaves will die and get mushy. In cooler climate, succulents may need to be brought indoors for winter if the frost and snow are a frequent occurrence. If frost is only mild, a frost cloth should be enough to keep succulents from freezing over or suffering frostbite. Overwatering is pretty much the number one cause of mushy leaves. It can also make it a lot easier for fungal disease to set up shop. Many succulents have different tolerance to water. Some will be just fine outdoors in the rain even during wet spells while others can rot pretty fast if they are exposed to the same level of water. If you see a few mushy leaves and the soil is soaked wet, it may be best to get the plant out of the potting mix, allow it to dry and repot to avoid rot. Keeping such plants out of the rain should also rectify the issue. A good rule to watering succulents is to let the potting mix dry out completely between waterings or wait until leaves get a little wrinkly. While there are some fantastic shade tolerant succulents that will grow well indoors, most tend to eventually die. A good amount of succulents indoors will also end up with mushy leaves even if you don't water them a lot. And the chance of having your succulent rot increase exponentially if you have them in one of these. If your indoor succulent gets mushy leaves, chances are you have the wrong type of succulent or it's just way too dark. It can also be overwatering or having a pot without a drainage hole. If you want to grow succulents indoors, I'd suggest doing a bit of research into appropriate types or looking into getting growing lights. And that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful and if you have anything to add or want to ask a question you can do so in the comments below. To learn more about succulents hit the subscribe button or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.